So nice to see your faces. My name is Mikhail and I'm a tech lead on Messenger platform. Uh, today I wanted to give a broad overview uh, of the platform and share some of the insights that can help you build greater bots. So where we are now? As you may know, Messenger passed 1 billion in monthly active users in July. 33,000 pages enabled bots since platform launch. And 34,000 developers use the platform. The number is steadily growing. I hope some of them are in the audience, by the way. Um, with our first launch and two following updates, we enabled a bunch of the use cases like customer support, status updates, content delivery, and, uh, and, and others. Uh, but we hear your feedback, and we know that it's not enough. So just a few weeks ago, we launched a new update that added payments, better web view support, our first version of sharing, and ads for news feed that drive people to bots. We are slowly rolling out these features out, and we are going to keep building in, this, in the, that area. We often get asked to share our roadmap. Uh, though I cannot tell you in detail, I'd like to talk more about what are the, the priorities for, for the team right now. Number one is always user experience. This is our main thing, and we would always try to make sure that this is the best, uh, that the UX is the best possible. Then better tracking would help you to better understand your audience. So we will keep investing in uh, the tracking for sharing, for links, and for other things. And as the quality of bots is getting better, we've started to think more about bots' reach and scalability. It was never really a problem of scale for us, but we were really waiting to get more great use cases, and I think we start to see some of the, the, the great bots coming, so we are ready to start scaling that. I'm looking for that. Um, there are multiple reasons to build for Messenger platform, and I'd like to highlight some of the major ones. Basically, these are the things that we'd like you to build as a part of your bot experience. Number one is we support a lot of great UI elements all, like already, such as buttons of different types, carousels, quick replies, and structured menus, as you can see on the slide. This is our constant priority, and we'll keep improving it and adding new things. Here's a sneak peek into, some, into one of these new features that we call the vertical list template. This is the second generic template for the platform. First, with the carousel allowed you to show the, the carousel of items. This is a vertical list that has its own set of but buttons for each item and the generic buttons for the whole bubble as well. That's, that was one of the things we were asked for the first generic template. This is going to come out before the end of the year. So, as you may know, we just launched the beta of payments in Messenger. Um, and we've started to slowly give access to the feature to developers. Note that the payments for now are US only, and we do not allow virtual goods for a bunch of reasons. Um, with Messenger payments, you get one click um, at transactions. It's actually not one click, but three, but for the sake of, you know, they are hype. It's one click transactions. We, 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 we pre-fill user info, shipping, and payment info for you. So you don't have, like, so you basically get all of that from us. You can call a native dialogue uh, from the web view. This is another big thing we just added. That means that you can still have your own custom web checkout flow and just inject payments into your own checkout. So you don't have to ask users for that on your website. You can just get our data. Uh, we already support PayPal and Stripe processors and Motocom. Here's how it looks. This is the payment flow in Messenger. You send a bubble with the buy button, you hit buy button, then you hit pay, and like enter your PIN or the, the, the fingerprint, and that's done. Um, you'll get the data for this purchase in, on your webhook. Or if you're doing it from the web, you'll get it in the browser. So we cannot really satisfy everybody with just a bunch of payment processors we have, like Stripe and PayPal. To, to, uh, to, to kind of solve that, we opened a, a tokenized payment. <clears throat> The idea here is to allow you to charge people by passing you their to tokenized um, credit card um, data. Then you can use it with any payment processor you want uh, and just charge the people your own, on, on your own. This is still US only for now uh, as well. 
this is actually a big thing for platforms. If you are building a platform, to think about that. The, only, like, the main difference between tokenized payments and Stripe and PayPal stuff is that Stripe and PayPal lives on the page side. This thing lives on the app side. So if you have multiple pages, that's the way to enable payments for all of them at once. Um, you can request access to payments with still white listing by following the link on, on, on the slide. Um, it may take some time to get approved, but we are working slowly through the, the queue. Another thing we've started to pay more attention to is the web part of the bot experience. Many bots use web views to extend their flows beyond just threads. That's basically because web views are great to consume large chunks of content and to provide rich input. This also allows developers to iterate on their mobile web experience while sharing it with the bot. So you, you can share the same code base and flow, no need to double develop. This is how web views look uh, in Messenger. We have multiple heights, we have uh, uh, the, the close uh, functionality, and you can actually close even from the web view. You, you don't really have to wait for user to close. So we, we are trying to make it a natural part of the bot experience, like similar to other UI elements we have. Um, to enable platform features for web views, we create a new web, uh, web SDK. You, uh, with this like SDK added to your pages, you can get user identity, call additional methods, and invoke payments, and all within the web view, but you will get the native stuff from the messenger. People who are having great experiences with bots, and there are such people, you may not believe it, but there are some, uh, it's getting better want to be, to be able to easily share these bots with their friends and family. And you want to, faci to, to facilitate that. For that, we added a new share button uh, uh, to, the, to the templates that allows you to share messages from bots with your friends. We also added attribution to shared messages. So when a user shares a message to a friend, uh, the friend will be able to open a bot from the header on, on top. And we added a way to share a bot itself from thread details, as well as start to convert m.me links into rich shares. Finally, there is a feature that I personally find really great. This is something that we enabled from day one, but not too many people know about it. We call it aggregators, and by that we mean apps that manage multiple pages in a self-serve way. Examples are Shopify, Chatfuel, and much more. The way to do it is with Facebook login but for page admins, not for the users. And that's actually a very big difference. Here's an example of uh, the Shopify's flow, having Facebook login in their shop setup for their businesses. When page admins go through this flow, Shopify can get their page tokens automatically. That allows your app to manage a lot of pages at once with no need of getting admin access to these pages. The, the page admin flow is very simple and it looks the following way. First two steps, user login and page access, are managed by Facebook. Third step, page choice, is added by you. That's really all the page admin has to do to enable a bot for their page. This is a very big deal. So this is the future as we see. This is a way for vertical platforms to, to scale and to onboard multiple businesses en masse. Uh, check manage pages and uh, permission for Facebook login and check the link on how to generate permanent page tokens using this new permission, this old permission, actually. It's really old. Um, another area I wanted to kind of talk about is growth. We know that growing your bot is difficult, we get it, and we're working on it. In the meantime, there are several ways to reach the sleeping messaging volume on Facebook and other places. Number one uh, is the news feed. It works really well for pages with a large number of followers on, on Facebook and allows to convert these followers in, in, like into bot users. You basically just share m.me link uh, with some, some relevant content, and that allows the followers of this page to jump in the messaging right from the, from the post. That works really well for high volume pages, and we saw some really nice big bots doing that. Number two is sent to messenger plugin we launched with the platform. That allows to easily create bot threads from website visitors. So basically, here's an example of TechCrunch having sent to Messenger button on their website. And when users go through this flow and click on, on the button, TechCrunch sends them a message. The first message is coming from the bot uh, right away. 
And number three is ads. Uh, we just launched ads with the messenger uh, target the, the, uh, for like to convert users into into the messenger uh, users. Um, it works similar to send to messenger plugin in like in a sense that it just starts a, a thread with the user right away, right after you click on the this button, uh, this button in in like in the ads. To sum up, these are three main sources of messaging traffic at the moment: uh, the news feed to convert page followers. Uh, the plugin, the send to messenger plugin to convert web users and ads if you want to get like large number of users very, very fast. And there are some secondary sources like news and media and word of mouth, but like, like obviously that works not that well and it's not really scalable. Um, we will be like adding more stuff, but basically these are the three areas we are keeping to invest in. Um, I also wanted to share some tips on the critical areas that like you may think of. Number one is bot versus human interop. We see more and more often that some businesses run bo both the, the bot, like in like, I mean, the automated experience and some human agents on uh, their side. So they ask how can they manage the human to bot uh, kind of transition? How, how can they pass control from the bot to, to the human and, and back? And there are several ways to do it. I just want to highlight some. The simplest way is just to handle button clicks by bot and text input by users. That's like a very basic one. And that's what most of the bots are doing now, like Shopify, for example. If you find any of the Shopify stores, the clicks on, like, on the buttons and all the shopping part is managed by the bot. And then when you type, this gets passed to the admins. And they just use page messaging to handle that. The harder way is to pause the thread for the bot, for the user, when the user clicks on some button, like talk to life agent. Pause the bot and somehow pass the signal to the live console. And then get back when the conversation got finished. Uh, and some of the really pro users actually use live chat consoles with, with APIs, like front app, that allow you to have the seamless uh, pass from, from bot and to, to, to the live agent and back. So that, there are multiple ways to, to solve that. Um, second thing I wanted to talk about in this area is retention. Um, I really wanted to highlight one thing here. And this thing is that inbox is still the main and it will be the main entry point for a current uh, like usage of your bot. And the nature of inbox is that your thread goes down. Like your bot, your entry point goes down all the time. Like when, you, like when the user gets a new message with their friends, your bot goes down. So you have to be popping your thread up all the time. And the only way to do it is by sending messages, right? The problem is how do you balance sending messages with being too noisy? And that the right way is to have really smart, targeted notifications with great timing. And at the same time, to have really good user opt-in and opt-out me mechanisms. We always say that the rule of the Samba is to always ask a user if the user wants to, to receive the messages of some sort and to provide a way to opt out at any point when you send the messages. If you want, a, 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 I guess, a good example, I think TechCrunch is doing fine that, and like some, some of the other uh, media and content bots have this opt-in, opt-out flow. Um, please do that. Uh, and like, that's really, like, some people think that the bots will be like either utilitarian and some of them will be content delivery. First, First group just won't survive if they don't do the, like the, the, the stuff. You always have to send some messages back uh, to, to retain the, the, the users. And if you look actually at WeChat, that's what they did. Like that, that's how the top boss in WeChat work. They always send something back, some like time to time, just to keep it, to, to keep thread up. Um, and then the other area is uh, monetization. Um, I guess like everybody asks, how, how do you make money on bots? There are four main ways now, right? You can make money by running ads in instant, uh, uh, articles and sending links, links to articles in, in your bot. We take some part of the revenue share, you take the other. That, that works really well for, for media. Then you can, uh, you can actually run your own ads uh, or like lead, lead gen in threads, but only within 24 hour window. So we changed the policy recently. You may have heard about that. Originally we were against all of the ads. Now we allow you to send ads in the 24-hour window after the user action or like the message. Um, 
So you can actually start making money on ads, although that kind of that shouldn't be really straightforward. There are more subtle ways to do that, like lead gen, again, like WeChat bots, a great example. They're doing that, like top bots on WeChat are making their money on lead gen, actually. Or at least that was how I saw it last time when I was looking at it. So third way is uh, native messenger payments we just launched. So since we just launched, the adoption is still pretty low, and we're still kind of very slowly rolling this out. But that is supposed to be the main way for the direct payments in Messenger. And then, yeah, since you don't have payments now, like especially outside of the States, you can still build your own custom payment flows on web and just call this web views, web flows from, from the bot. Um, these are basically four main ways. Let me know actually if I missed some. If, if you know some other way, find me and tell me. <laughs> um, that's all I really had. Check our docs and Facebook group. The whole team is in the group. We can answer the question there. Uh, we will start posting guides on different areas that I covered, uh, like aggregators and, uh, and like, like retention. Um, what else did I want to say? I guess I wanted to say that for us, the measure of success is really your success. So if you are starting to make some money in like by any means in Messenger, or if you are thinking of starting to make money, find me and let's chat about how, how can we help you to make money. Uh, not just directly, but like basically serving your needs, serving the business needs. If you have a real, like a real use case, just find me. Let's talk about this use case and how we can serve you better. Thanks, and thanks to the Aura team for doing the conference. That's pretty great. <laughs>